Here is another example from a security video footage of a fire in an airport in the UK. Fire breaks out, the alarm goes off, and in this part of the airport terminal, these guys are waiting for their plane, there's a very sophisticated alarm. It's a voice alarm, not just a bell. The voice alarm is giving them instructions. There's a fire, please move to the adjoining zone. And they behave correctly, they move to the adjoining zone. When they get into the adjoining zone, the sophisticated fire alarm is saying, no need to evacuate, you're okay, there's a fire in the building but you're okay. So what do they do? They get that conflicting message, don't forget they're waiting to catch a plane, they come back in. So they're starting to come back into the building that's on fire. And you can't see it very well but there's smoke up here and they're still coming in because they've got conflicting messages. And it's only because what put the person that saves the day here, and you'll see her coming up in a moment, a formidable woman, and I know a couple of people like this, uh, coming in and she's got her hands on the hips and she's yelling at people and she actually saves the day. This person here. She gets them to move out. The sophisticated alarm didn't work. It was the human intervention, someone assertive human intervention which made the difference in this case. Now these people are not ball bearings. People don't behave like ball bearings. And so if you're going to model people, you need to take into account this sort of realistic behaviour. Okay, I want to move on now to talk about some of the work we're doing in developing models to represent this sort of behaviour. Um, we've developed a range of models here at Greenwich called the Exodus suite of software. And we have models to simulate evacuation from buildings, building Exodus, aircraft, air Exodus, ships, maritime Exodus, and we have a VR tool called VR Exodus, which creates three-dimensional representations of the results from these uh, software products. The Exodus range of software not only models evacuation, but also circulation and movement of people. So you can just help use the software to help design structures for efficient movement of people in structures. And some of the projects we've been involved with range from the design of the super jumbo for Airbus, the A380, uh, the Millennium Dome just across the river here, this aircraft here, which is a replacement to the A380, which hasn't even flown yet, but it's a, we're already working on the plane to replace this. I showed you before some work on Ascot, Canary Wharf across the road. Um, we did quite a bit of work on Stadium Australia for the Olympics, uh, in the, uh, the Sydney Olympics, large passenger ships, uh, naval vessels where we've been working on the new aircraft carrier for the Royal Navy, and also large historic buildings. This is um, the Schönbrunn Palace in Vienna, uh, a World Heritage Site. Now, what we do in the computer model is we try and incorporate issues to do with how, what, what makes up people. We have an occupant model which describes people as a collection of attributes, things like your patience level, um, how quickly you can walk, uh, your respiration rate, uh, your patience level, your drive level, these sorts of figures that describe you as an individual person. We have a behaviour model which tries and incorporates the things we've learnt from all these experiments we've done and from studying past disasters. We try and incorporate all this behaviour into our behaviour model. We have a toxicity model which uh, calculates using what's known as a fractional effective dose model, calculates if you, how many breaths you can take of particular types of gases like carbon monoxide, the main fire gas. And it calculates how long you will survive in a particular fire environment. Um, and we have the hazard model which actually spreads the hazards throughout the, the structure. So this is roughly, if you like, the, 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 the basic components of the Exodus range of software. And we put it all together and we can then simulate how people behave in emergency situations and also in normal circulation examples. So I want to run through a few examples. This is some work we did in the United States in San Francisco with the uh, Arab Transportation Organization. This is the BART underground system in San Francisco. And our job with, uh, with um, Arab was to study this station and to determine that the people that run BART were suggesting that in the next five years they're going to double the number of people using the, uh, the underground infrastructure. And their question was, will the infrastructure cope with twice as many people? And so we collected data, we built models, and we simulated how people behave in this underground station. So these are the platform levels. We're not showing you the trains. People are coming on and off the trains. They're going up to the, um, uh, the, uh, the main area of the station where the, where the ticket office is. And you'll see them moving around. Some are going down the stairs. They go through the gates. They have these odd gates in the States, in some, some cities, they're bi-directional. 
So you can go both ways. Uh, and these are, are not very good. They're good if you have low densities and lots of gates. Uh, and it works fine for this uh, number of people. But once you start putting twice as many people in, you start getting problems around these gates. And this is one of the things we, we discovered. So this is an example of using our modelling tool to look at the circulation of people, non-emergency circulation of people. This is another example. This time we're not showing you the fancy VR. This is the, uh, the, the, the normal way the software runs. You get the dots representing people. These, each green dot is a person. This is a city square. This is in a city in the UK. And they're looking at running a concert in the square. And the police and the city authorities wanted to know what sort of problems can we expect. So when, when you see the dots moving, these are people moving along the streets into the square, and when it changes to this mode, we're getting population density, people per square metre. So where it's red, you've got critical crowd densities, and you either want to go back into this layout and either change the street architecture, or if you can't do that, you want to put crowd control measures in place there. You might want to have the police there uh, to diffuse any situation as it develops. So this is another example where we're looking at crowd behaviours uh, in, in a non-emergency situation. Uh, again with stations, this is some work we're currently doing. Uh, this is in Barcelona. We're studying how people in Barcelona use their underground system. We're, look, we're measuring how people use escalators. We're measuring how people use the ticket machines. And we're measuring how people use the ticket barriers. We're collecting all this information and we're putting it into our computer models and then running simulations. This is an example showing two escalators going up, a staircase and a large escalator going down. And the people in this model, it's important to realise they are adapting their behaviour. We've not pre-programmed these people. They are making choices. Do I go up the escalator or do I go up the stairs? If I go up the escalator, am I going to ride the escalator or am I going to walk the escalator? So when we set this up, we don't know what these people are going to do beforehand. And we're seeing the behaviour emerge from the simulation based on the data we've collected in Barcelona. We're also collecting data in uh, uh, Shanghai. And the data we've got so far suggests that people in Shanghai behave very differently on escalators to people in Barcelona. And we're about to do the same in London to see how people behave in London. And we suspect that they're also going to behave very differently to the people in Shanghai and possibly different to the people in Barcelona. But that's, that's yet to be done. So again, this is an example of a circulation. This is another example of an of a underground station. This time this is a station in London, and here we're doing an evacuation simulation. Uh, very pertinent when we're talking about very crowded stations uh, and possibly terrorist-inspired incidents and so on. We need to understand how these stations can evacuate. And here we're looking at a, a relatively low-density situation, about 0.67 people per square metre on the platforms. You can see this has all gone red. It's the only way in and out of this station. It's gone red, high density here. People are coming out to the level above. And, and the simulation is telling us we can get everyone out of here in about seven minutes. And that seems all right. But we haven't, remember, we're only doing one side of the equation, the required uh, safe egress time. We, we haven't said anything about the, the other side of the equation yet. And we'll come to that in a minute.